the SEC suing Coinbase, alleging securities breaches. What does your role entail as an advisory member to that yeah. global board? So thanks for having me, as always. Uh, so Coinbase has stood up and announced a global advisory board. It's bipartisan, has Democrats and Republicans. It's global. You know, my specific role is I have a bit of a background um, of having worked with disruptive, innovative companies, trying to work within the system in a responsible way to bring regulatory certainty and clarity. People also call you a political operator. <laughs> well, that's another way of maybe putting it. But, but politics is always part of that. Um, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, we live in a democracy, small d democracy. Politics does ultimately impact, as it should, and inform policy, which ultimately brings regulatory certainty. Uh, and so a lot of what I've done over my career, I've been in government, I've run major campaigns, uh, and I've certainly advised really innovative companies that are disrupting the status quo. But how can they do that in a really responsible right. way? Uh, and I think Coinbase, you know, in the crypto space has been really that leading platform seeking to do it in a responsible way, U.S.-based, going through the processes, working with regulators. It's disruptive. It's trying to update the financial system. That's a big deal. But it's trying to really do it in a responsible way. Um, Brian Armstrong, 24 hours ago, was asked about the timing of the SEC filing suits against both Coinbase and Binance in a matter of 48 hours. Yeah. He, he, the word he used was conflate or confuse. What, what's your reaction to the timing of those two actions? So I grew up in Maine, and we used to have a saying, when you go to bed at night and there's no snow on the ground, and you wake up in the morning and there's snow, you can pretty safely conclude that it has snowed over the course of the evening. This is a sort of policy version of that. I think members of Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, have expressed concern about the timing of this. And I'll say this as someone who has been in government. Uh, historically in this country, our regulators that oversee financial sectors have been understood, and really by design, to be fair arbiters, to be umpires, to call balls and strikes. And I do think if you look at how this played out this week, taking something that's apples and something that's oranges, conflating them and putting them together, and doing it right before there's a major congressional hearing to actually begin the process of bringing clarity to this space, I do think that raises some serious, profound questions. Like, our system works because there is a rule of law. Part of that rule of law is those umpires calling those balls and strikes fairly. Uh, I think in this process, some real serious questions have been raised. Okay, so the rules. Yep. I remember two years ago when Coinbase filed to go public, it wrote in no uncertain terms, there is a high degree of uncertainty regarding the legality of operations. It wrote, regulators may disagree with the company's view. It isn't covered by their rules. And Brian Armstrong's welcoming the opportunity to go to court and use that to set precedent. Is that a good idea, a good way of resolving this? You know, ultimately, you're going to have to break the eggs a little bit to make the omelet on this. I think that's part of this process and part of the journey. Um, and so I do think one way or the other, either through the legal process or through legislation, you are going to get clarity. But which is better to you? Well, look, in, in my view, as someone who comes out of politics and policy, like, the country should have a first principles approach. Right? There should be a strategic approach to how you want to deal with this industry. The rest of the world is actually moving forward really fast to put frameworks in place. They specifically want to be crypto hubs because they understand that this is going to be a big part of the financial rails of the future. If you default to a legal process, companies like Coinbase will certainly get their clarity. Remember, this involves 12 tokens out of more than 200 that the platform has on its exchange. But you'll get the clarity through that. I think it's far better from a U.S. perspective, from an economic perspective, a competitive perspective, from a national security perspective, if you're actually doing this with a real strategy. Look, I was involved in the 1996 Telco Act. You know, that began with a really whole set of complex ideas. President Bill Clinton took a big step back and said, hey, look, at, let's have a first principles approach. I want tech to be based in the United States. That's what I want. And he put forth legislation and right. done in a bipartisan way. You flash forward to where we are today. The U.S. has emerged as the center of the global economy because we are the center of tech. Well, paradoxically, emphasis on the word global mm -hmm. in your advisory title. Sure. So how does Coinbase grow itself outside yeah. of the jurisdiction of the United States to your mind? I mean, what are you advising them to do? Well, I think they've been doing a great job of diversifying where they are geographically as well as their products and services. You know, Brian has done a little bit of a world tour. Brian Armstrong, the CEO, over the last couple of months was in London, has been in Dubai. A uh, company's been in Brazil. These are all places that are actually putting frameworks in place. I mean, the U.K. has an announcement today about the next steps in its process. 
The PM has made clear, Prime Minister Sunak has made clear he wants London to be a hub. Uh, you think of the historic rails that have existed in London, historically going back several hundred years. You know, one of the first central banks was developed in London, the Bank of England. Um, and you think of the Commonwealth and the role that, those, that, that crypto could play in actually uh, advancing that system. Like, I think Sunak actually sees enormous opportunity here and has talked about it. But that's not the only place. Japan this week right. actually moved forward with specific regulations and activity. And again, so you see what is happening. There was a recent report from Electric Capital, another venture firm here in the Valley, and they indicated that the U.S. is losing market share of crypto developers. A million jobs, high-quality engineering jobs on the table in the next five or six years. Right. Are they going to take place here or are we going to send it offshore? And look, just this week, it was an interesting week for us at, at Han. You know, we announced a, a, a project uh, or a project that we're invested in was announced um, it's called Argus Labs. It's the first sort of computer gaming uh, uh, platform right. built on top of blockchain. The founder of this is a young 20-year-old, uh, came from Indonesia at the age of 16 to the University of California computer science program, graduated really early. Like, he is literally the first round pick that you want if you're a country. Where is he in one word? And he's here in the United States building this project. Right. And he should be. This is, we want to attract these jobs and these entrepreneurs.